Good morning. Hello, hello. Friday, January 15th, 2021. <laughs> That's the first time I've said 2021 like that. All right, good. Well, we've got um, Marcin, um, Tanuj, Josh, Shubank, uh, Dhruv, Mihu, Nagesh, and no doubt some stragglers as well. So, okay. Hello, everybody. If you've got video, pop it on. I'd love to see you guys. Um, we're, we're just about to dig into the agenda and now's the right time to slap down some additional agenda if, if you've got any. So don't be shy. Uh, I'm not shy with um, making agenda for all of you. So <laughs> uh, what, what are you laughing about, Shubank? What's uh... <laughs> right. no, just, just, just for that shine about thing. Yeah, no, I know. I'm sorry, bad. I should have uh, added more sarcasm onto the end of that uh, statement. I, somehow, your, somehow your name ended up right here. I don't know what's going on. Good. Well, uh, we have um, um, a couple of folks who might not have been on the... There's a couple of people who just joined who might not have been on the call before. And we're about to get into a few topics fairly deeply. So, but before we do, it would be nice to welcome some newcomers. And so if you haven't been on this call before, now's your chance to get to know some people. Um, uh, Nagesh and Ralph, I'm not sure if, if either of you have been on this call before. You, you might have. But <laughs> But yeah, if you're able to, um, please introduce yourself. Um, if, you're, if your audio isn't quite working, we can do it in chat as well, so. Hello. Hello. Yeah, um, so good evening. My name is um, Raphael from um, Nigeria, a full stack web developer. Oh, very good. Uh, and, um, uh, Ralph, did you say, did you say Ralphio or Ralph? Ralphio. Oh, okay. Very good. So um, am I getting the spelling correct in the meeting minutes? Ralphio. Oh, Ralphio. That's R-A-P-H-A-P-L. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <I don't, laughs> sorry. I have no, that, uh, that's such a, it's a relatively common name. I have no idea why I thought it was Ralphio. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Ra Ra yeah, okay, very good. Um, nice to have you. Uh, full stack development um, coming out of Nigeria. Very good. Um, well, hey, if we don't, um, let's make sure to get you in. Yeah. And then Nagesh, I'm not sure that your audio is going to work for us today. Uh, so Nagesh, you might have to say hi in chat. Very good. All right. Well, well, welcome, Rafael. Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Very nice to have you. And and Nagesh as well. And Nagesh is hailing in from Bangalore, um, where apparently it's Kite City. Um, this week is that the or, or our kite festival is kite festival going on a little bit further south is that the deal is it more windy uh down south nice all right we've got zero wind here yesterday and today it's not happening for us so all right cool okay um hey shridi are you on with us uh Nope, she's not. So, 
we'll skip over um, her part. Of it. And just to say that um, there's been a few newcomers who joined this week into the community. So very nice. Um, I don't know that any of them are on this call at the moment. So we'll have to, we'll have to warmly welcome them. Um, first topic up, um, Marcin, you had had, well, um, a surprisingly interesting um, um, couple of alternatives to deploying Meshery. And I don't know that we've gotten a chance to go through your, your work. Hi, hello. hello. Uh, would you like to, to do it right now or just? Yeah, yeah, if, if you don't mind. Yeah, if you don't mind, take, take you know, five, 10 minutes or so and, and uh, tell okay. yeah. Yeah, and maybe I should stop sharing so you can share. I mean, <laughs> okay. Ah, you okay? You would like to uh, just now? Okay. Okay. Can you see? Yeah, we do. Okay. So there is the repo for weekly of the library. Yeah. What is all about is just to create the virtual machine in some automated way. So in the background, yeah, there is the background file with the config. And what it can do is it can create the virtual machine machine with Hyper-V or virtual box uh, hypervisor. Yes, the background file supports multi multiple VMs. It's based on the CentOS uh, OS, CentOS 7 right now. And via the Unzipple playbook called locally using the Unzip local provisioner from the background, it can install the, it can prepare the uh, OS to install Docker, install Docker, install Minikube and create the Minikube, uh, just start the Minikube, create some cluster. Alternatively, install the kind or create cluster and install some tools and also the binary of the mesh array, but it's not included there. Uh, so uh, just to, I was using the Windows 10 operating system to test it, but it should work anywhere. With Hyper-V, of course, only on the Windows. So the startup with the, uh, you, you of course have to install the Vagrant uh, before. This is the, the first prerequisite. To just run it with the Hyper-V, you need to add this minus minus provider Hyper-V. With the uh, virtual box, you need to add the minus minus provider virtual box. So, uh, why I'm just uh, uh, talking about two different hypervisor because I was very happy with VirtualBox some time ago, but if on my last laptop with Windows 10, I had some performance issue with the VirtualBox. So I just uh, play around with Hyper-V and in my humble opinion, Hyper-V actually on the one uh, Windows 10, especially on my laptop, is just faster. Yes, so this is, I'm using the Hyper-V. The disadvantage of the Hyper-V actually on Windows is the uh, network support. So the VirtualBox have better network support. Hyper-V just basically almost doesn't support uh, out of the box the network. So you need to prepare the virtual switch manually. Uh, VirtualBox support it from the, via the background, uh, just commands or API, whatever. So this is the example. This is why I put this one. This is the example how to create via the on the uh, Hyper-V, the NAT network configuration. Uh, but you can use the external switch, which can be uh, created very easily with uh, uh, Hyper-V manager. But just the NAT is a little bit tricky, or so there are the, some comments to do it. 
just let's to see the code. Uh, okay, so just we'll just copy this one. Uh, to make the fresh clone. Yeah, it's clone. Just open some editor. Okay, and what we have inside? So we have this background file, and this background file is just reading this config file. There's the config which just define what we would like to do. Uh, I'm using the CentOS EOS. There are some kind of list of dictionaries. Uh, and you can define the boxes. There is actually defined uh, the first one, let's say seven, just to avoid some name on my local machine because I tested it before. You can define on this. This is the YAML. Yeah, this is the list. Yes, this is the first elementals list after the dash, the, uh, the first, the second, and so on. If you uncomment this one, you the uh, background app provider create as many as many virtual machines as you define there. Uh, okay, and this is the name, memory, and the amount of CPUs, which we can just uh, define as you want. Uh, yeah, this is at the beginning. There's also the one one of the plugins installed. There is the installation of it. Uh, the Vagrant Reload, I will explain a little uh, later wh why this is important. So next there is this the normal Vagrant stuff. There is the provider for the Hyper-V defined. There's the provider for a virtual box defined. Uh, and there is the uh, provisioning part. And because the idea was just to uh, do everything from the scratch based on the uh, just original official uh, vagrant image from the CentOS. So everything is done via this uh, uh, provisioning part. And because there is the Docker has to be installed, yes, the Docker and during the installation creates a new group on operating system Docker. And if we would like to uh, act as a Vagrant user, as this is the default approach with Vagrant, this Vagrant user has to be added to the Docker group. And normally in the uh, Linux system, there is, for example, the a command new, new GRP. And the new GRP just refresh the user's uh, credential uh, during the live SSH session when, for example, the, the, some, some of the permission will change. For example, the user will be added to the new group and you can maybe just put the new GRP and it will be just refreshed this, this credential, yes. With the background, it doesn't work so easily because the connection is some kind of local connection to the uh, to this VM, it's just some internally, this is not the SSH, yes? And just to refresh it really, just after installing Docker to give the Vagrant user permission to act with the Docker daemon, uh, just the only way which I found it was just to reload the uh, VM. So this is made via this, this is uh, the reload, which is uh, triggered after installation of the Docker itself. And this is done using this uh, Vagrant Reload plugin. Uh, this part can be not used. Uh, this definition is enough, but it's asked some noisy question during the installation. If you really would like to install the uh, plugin, yes, I would like. So this is added to make some automation. The downside of it is that this plugin will be installed globally, but uh, this is not uh, so so bad. So I'm just using it because it's automated. Just uh, make it quicker. Okay, so let's uh, review this uh, provisioning part because it can be adjusted, whatever. So uh, there is the one role uh, because initially I wanted to make the, everything in one role, but then I just uh, face this issue with this uh, adding this Vagrant user to the Docker group. So I 
prepare to play books which are using exactly the same role, yes? And in this role, if the default, you can find some dictionaries with some uh, parameters what we would like to do. And the default is everything is set to false, yes? If some action is, everything is set to false. So in the playbook, we'll define what you would like to do. And if this uh, playbook docker, there is the pre-config step, which makes some turn of the swap, uh, uh, turn of the SLR Linux and so on. So some such things which are by default uh, enabled by in this official uh, vagrant image, but we don't like it or we just, we don't need to use it. Uh, so the first one just make the pre-config and install the Docker, everything is false, so we do not need to add any other variables because in the unzip playbook, the variable on the playbook layer level has the pres precedence uh, than this with this uh, default. The defaults, they are just, they will be overwritten. The default, there are, uh, they have the uh, lowest uh, precedence. Uh, and the our part, yes. So in this part, we will define the all other so we can just uh, choose between the mini queue. If we say true this part and can uh, set the version and for the mini cube also how much memory CPU the mini cube should use. And I'm using this mini cube with this uh, Docker driver version or we can use the kind. Let's say use it and let's create the kind uh, cluster in the same step, okay? And let's install some basic tools, yes. Let's say uh, kubectl, which should be needed. Or for example, let's install something additional. Let's install pack and scaffold also. The measure I part will put at the, at the end because it's not fully ready yet. Uh, because only binary, because the starting there is something, some, some, uh, some trick with the uh, unzip playbook because the Starting the measure, I we stay we staling the lock, yes. So the command is never finishing. So this is why I only install the binaries uh, right now. Okay, so we have the tools. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's go uh, check again. Six gig free. Okay, uh, so everything is saved right now. Uh, that was, okay, two files modify, okay. Uh, just let me check because I didn't see, uh, uh, Okay, it looks fine. Uh, okay, so Vagrant app minus minus provider hyper V. Okay, let's go. What we have, the bringing the machine, creating the VM, imported the VM image. Um, okay. was, it, is this, was this some, uh, has this been used anywhere else? The, this, I'm not sure what to call it, but this, this installer tool? What do you mean? Um, uh, I, this is this is my idea. This is just my 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 playbook with Vagrant. So uh, because the Hyper View, we need to choose the switch because it doesn't uh, support the network. So I choosing the external because I have the H DHCP server there. Okay, so the VM is starting. This is some kind of a lab environment, yes, which everyone can use. So. This is something which made my life easier. Maybe someone will also oh, yeah. use it. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I ask because um, it's sophisticated, or you know, it, there's um, a lot no, of. Yeah. No, this is this is this is my idea how to do it. This is uh, this is not. I also use some just previous concept or previous experience from different projects, but no, this is just just. Uh, my the, the the this role is is mine. The unzip role is mine. The customization of the background is mine. 
Nice. Hello, okay, Marcel, so I just uh, had a quick question, uh, like before we move further. So, if I'm getting this correct, so like Vagrant is responsible for setting up a VM, and rest of the installations and everything, like the Docker and uh, Kubernetes, is being handled by Ansible. Is yeah, that like correct. correct? Correct. So, why have we used Vagrant as an independent tool when uh, I mean, like the only responsibility of Ansible is that it can probably SSH up into a VM and then all of the installations and pre-configurations and everything that can be set up in multiple playbooks can be done via Ansible. So why do we need Vagrant as a tool for initializing the VM first and then using Ansible as a tool? And I, how, how would you like to use Ansible to create the VM and to work with the uh, provisioning the VM with Hyper-V and your uh, virtual box? Uh, I mean, I, I'm really not sure because I haven't used Vagrant. I mean, this is the first time that I'm uh, hearing about it. But if the responsibility of Vagrant in this particular case is installation of some program, let's say in, in, in your case, that's Hyper-V. So why can't we do it uh, just with the Ansible? I mean, why do we specifically need Vagrant over there? Because Vagrant, in my opinion, is the proper tool just to create the virtual machine. Okay, so if I'm getting this right, so like Vagrant can be tied up with any of the cloud providers that we are using. For example, let's say that uh, we want to uh, set up uh, the entire architecture of Player 5 okay. by, let's say, using. You have, there is the HashiCorp tool. You, you have several providers. Yes. Uh, uh, I think that was the, why I'm using Vagrant? Because in my opinion, that was the very nice way to just call the, and create the virtual machine, store the definition as a code, yes, to have the possibility to, so, to follow the infrastructure as a code uh, approach. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's really nice, it's working with VirtualBox and VMware, and uh, as you saw, there is very easy to just mm -hmm. specify the provider if someone would like to use such hypervisor, some other would like to use something else. Yes, of course, you can use it in the cloud, really in the cloud, Mm -hmm. The most probably the better approach will be to go with uh, Terraform. Yeah, yeah with the Terraform, Terraform. But but this the, this is just not to uh, deploy some huge environments on the cloud because the Terraform. Mm -hmm. is to, this is just to to play on your PC just to make some experiments to have the okay. uh, environment which you fully control and which is just can be uh, set up really quickly locally. Mm -hmm. yes. that, that, that was the idea. Okay, so this is so, uh, so this entire setup using background and uh, all the Ansible toolbooks is easing out the process of local set, uh, setup, right? Because if we are to move this to like deployment and everything, but I, because then I think Ansible would do the trick all alone, I think without the use of Vagrant because what Ansible does, and I, I, I may be wrong. So if you could like just correct me wherever I'm wrong. So if what happens is that uh, because I've used Ansible in some of the CI CD pipeline projects somewhere. So what it does is it SSHs into the machine using a secret. And then all the playbooks that are there, uh, like as you have provided over there, it installs it in the respective virtual machine. So even if we are talking on the, uh, you could say the path of uh, horizontal scaling, let's say you want to fire up n number of VMs on the cloud. So what happens is that you could deploy the same Ansible playbooks and at the entire workflow in all yeah. of the VMs. Yeah, 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 you're right. So the, the background is only used just to create the VM. And if you have the VMs already, whatever it is, you can use the playbook separately. Yes, this is the just beauty of this. Yes, the, and why unzip? Why not bash? Because the idempotence uh, paradigm. Yes, you can. Yeah, that's totally the, the, This is the this is the main main purpose why I choose unzip, not the bash script, whatever. The idempotence is just 
beautiful yes you can repeat the playbook whatever it's just checking the state if anything is done it will be not done again okay but just right now it's created yes we can just go step by step what's happened yeah, from this uh, so because i use the uh, hyper-v uh, provider for the hypervisor i had to choose my uh, network switch yes the virtual box can automate it with the uh, hyper-v you have to answer this question i choose the external i have the H dhcp server it gave me this ip address for this machine uh, okay there is some uh, standard uh, background uh, stuff that he's just inserting the key i've also just uh, in this vagrant file said that uh, the directory should be uh, uh, should be shared uh, there is the option there let me check yes there is the option that which just you can disable the this syncing this directory to inside this machine uh, if you set it true i put it to force so this directory from which the vagrant is executing yes is running is shared into the virtual machine there are different methods different drivers it is if are our sync uh, the easiest one so this is not the uh, shared storage there is just synced synced once so if you make the change uh, locally in the vm it will be not reflected just outside the but okay uh, so, so this is Marcia, sorry to interrupt um, pr probably just a, a couple more minutes here and, and we'll um, uh, move to the next topic um, okay uh, okay so that's sync the first playbook is executed yes the docker is installed the unzip task from my role Okay, everything installed. Next, the shutdown. Yes, we have this uh, reload uh, plugin just to refresh this Docker, uh, uh, the permission for, for the vagrant user. So the second playbook, yes, exactly this one. The second playbook, uh, yeah, this one is running. So we have this. Uh, these steps are so the kind is uh, installing as we can see that the vagrant is already has the uh, is belonging to the vagrant uh, group and what we have next the uh, class vagrant uh, cluster is created the tools is installed is if we make vagrant ssh and go into this machine inside Okay, yes, we can use CTL get or yes, we have, uh, we can see that we have the kind running. Uh, okay, so that's some kind of environment is ready. The question is how many time we have more. Uh, because what can be interested from the development point of view also is the scaffold. I can just show some example how to how to, but I need some 15 minutes, something like this, just to, to make sense to, to 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 show it, or we can make this another way, or another time. Uh, because right now we have these tools installed, which are. Uh, which were specified uh, in this so the kind the cluster is created uh, kind there is the so the docker demon docker ps yes we have the kind uh, the kind container running we have the kind get nodes yes so this is the one one node kubectl get nodes we can see the same so the uh, Kubernetes cluster version 1.19 is running. Uh, the question is how many time we have. Uh, I think the scaffold is really nice for the from the developer point of view or the pack. But if there's another topic, we can skip. Oh, okay, yeah, very good. Um, 
Marcin, thank, thanks for this. This is uh, um, tool, the deployment tools like this are, well, they need to be perpetually configurable. Everybody's got their own way of their own, they wanna tweak and, and do installs in different ways. And um, one of the things, it, it's, um, that's one of the things that Meshery focuses on for service meshes is Meshery will install a service mesh, which is um, quite helpful. Um, and many, 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 many users use Meshery for that. It's also of, it, it's funny because on, on the other hand, it's of nominal value. Uh, which is kind of weird to say. That's probably the wrong way of saying it. It's more like it's of, um, it's uninteresting, I guess. I'm not, I'm speaking towards Meshery's um, install, installation of service meshes. It's a commodity capability, I guess is what I'm referring to. Um, but it's entirely necessary. Um, uh, so many people need it. And, and so to reflect on that same sentiment here with this tooling, um, same thing. Um, Meshery when has been a, it's a, it's a BYOK. It's a bring your own Kubernetes project, meaning when you know Meshery doesn't doesn't require Kubernetes, um, it'll do some functionality without Kubernetes. But four fifths of what Meshery does sort sort of expects that Kubernetes is there and it's going to interface with it. So uh, sometimes bringing your own Kubernetes is a little bit of a pain in the rump for different folks. Uh, especially if they're operating in environments that you're speaking to here in virtual machines, in, in Windows, in Hyper-V. And so I was excited to see your project. Um, to, to, I guess to, to, there's some good feedback that was coming through. There's probably more questions and feedback. I think the question to everyone on the call is, and this is certainly a question to you, Marcin, as well, um, there's been a suggestion that that um, there's a set of installer scripts, installer manifests for um, either different flavors of Kubernetes or different versions of Kubernetes. Um, those installer scripts are in the, the Meshery repo under slash install. And um, it's first a question to Marcin and then, and then next a question to everyone else is do, do do, do we do do you do you guys collectively feel like this would be a good addition as an as a, well well what's the right word what does Kubernetes project use to describe this um, uh, I guess an, a non core thing or a um, um, God, what they, they use a term. Anyway, if you consider that there's a tent and Meshery does a number of things, um, that, that there's a family of, of tools that help. Um, uh, the reason I'm describing pot the potential inclusion of this capability in the Meshery project as like a, as an aside or as a sibling, as a child, as a, as a non-core thing is in part because, oh my goodness, there's so much to um, support and uh, of, of what you have here that I'm not sure that we could do that that the collection of us could do uh, the best job so we, we would want to denote to people that um, it's a use at your own risk thing or it's a um, it's a we'll, we'll give you best effort support as much as we can um, but yeah so I, how does that strike you um, I, I'm not sure if I just really got the question. Yeah, let me, yeah. <laughs> I, was not, I was not concise in any way. What I meant to say was, Marcin, this is nice. I, I was, I'm excited by it. Do you, would you like to, would you like for us to um, hyperlink, it, you know, in docs it, to say, hey, there's a good project over here. This might help you with certain environments. Would you like us to, would you like to work to, um, put the put these scripts into the Meshery repo, um, and I think the reason I was being long-winded was to say, if you do, um, we'll do our like you and the rest of the folks here will do our best to help answer any questions or overcome any challenges people might have with this code. 
Um, yeah. But it is a slight, it's slightly an aside because, because Meshri is a bring your own, bring your own infra environment. You bring your own Kubernetes, bring your own. Okay, so just to play with Meshri, I just needed to have the Kubernetes running somehow. So I just prepared the automated way to install it just to, but the idea is to have you own own private lab on local PCS to play with it, to experiment, to, to just do it. Regarding the mesh right, there is some one task. We just install the uh, binaries. Yes, this is there. So all this is defined with this variable. Some different things are included just based on this variables, variables. This is what the role is uh, doing. Uh, and I couldn't make the automated startup of Meshri right now with the Unzip uh, because the startup just, uh, as I said before, it's just uh, tailing the log uh, indefinitely. And the, the command, the, the, this command which startup doesn't finishes because still displays this, this log. So this it wasn't so, so, uh, so I didn't uh, put the startup there, but the binary is already installed. So if one command, and as you saw, yes, that was one minute. Yes, we did this preparing of this whole lab. No, no, no more, yes. You can have everything installed with the Docker, VMs, and so on, new from the scratch, new host with uh, running cluster, with installed binaries of the MeshRI with all this tool, which, which can define what you, what you really want to do yeah, in this. And there is the there is the just uh, simple dictionary yes, from different variables that what what you would like. There is easy, extensible, and so on. Uh, so that was just the idea to make it uh, quicker to to have some the lab which you can experiment very very easily and very very quick with different different things. Nice. Fair enough. Very good. Um, well, if anyone has feedback for Marcin, um, take take it into um, Slack if you would. And Marcin, I'm I'm keen to uh, let us know when Meshri starts to work here. Um, this is uh, it's pretty neat. Pretty neat. Nice. Okay. Um, anything else, Marcin? Before we go on to the next topic. Uh and I think just I, if you are uh, just playing with the container, yes, so I, I really suggest this to, to just, this is really nice. Yes, this is the scaffold, it's already installed. Uh, it's really nice, but maybe maybe the next time. Just, uh, I, I just uh, recommend to, to, to check this tool from the development point of view. It's really, really, uh, really nice. It's also speed up or make the, local uh, CI CD workflow really, really easy from the development point of view. Yes, uh, we can make another session. I understand there is not enough time today. Okay, so that's, nice. that's, that's, that's all. Cool. All right. Good, good, good. Okay, okay. So I'm just stopping the sharing. Yeah. Ah, you already. Oh, very good. Okay, um, okay, thanks. All righty. Well, um, hey, Couple of things to note. Um, oh, Philip, um, Philip U. Olberg, I think, um, had uh, a, community, a community member had requested instructions for air gap deployment of Meshery. And I didn't have time to grab the link, but there's an issue open on that. Meshery is deployable in an air gap situation. There are a couple of considerations to make, uh, but we haven't published. Uh, formal instructions or, or for, formally published what those considerations are. So I mentioned it in case people on the call are interested in participating and documenting what that is. Um, Shridi or someone else, maybe if you want to grab the link and, and put it here, that would be good. So a, a call for engagement, if anyone wants to, is interested in that. Jump into the issue. Uh, Drew, I guess probably just the briefest of notes, um, SMI conformance. We, um, we're, it's time. We're, we're ready. We've got a number of adapters that, that run SMI conformance tests um, successfully. <clears throat> and we're ready to persist those results 
and you've created a nice table that Josh is going to show in a minute um, for the conformance test. So do you, you want to? Yeah, the things left now are basically persisting it through cloud. And most probably, we are going to we were going to update the protobuf file too, if I remember correctly. So that too. And yeah, a, a bit of coordination on that, on that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one more thing, which I would like to confirm, I guess with you would be, uh, by end to end persistence, I'm uh, are you also talking about the CI/CD integrations? Um, or, or just our uh, like uh, the SMP results which are persist in the cloud? Yep, that. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. So the the public facing well, one so that when users return to Meshery, um, that they can see their prior result sets. But then, two, so that the world can see the current status of which service meshes are compliant with SMI. And so, yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, that was that topic quickly. Uh, next topic quickly, and then we'll, um, Josh will probably take us through the remainder of the time, I suspect. T two items. Um, hey, if you've, there's a lot of folks who've contributed to uh, Meshery V050 from V040 in between that time frame. Um, if you're one of them, and or even if you're not and you're just interested, um, there's a very um, lightly drafted announcement for this upcoming release. Shortly, we will begin to make beta releases for V05. Today, the, the latest stable release is 427, but it's, it's time for us to start to do this. Beta, whoop, beta one. Um, if you wanna, if you wanna uh, play with this functionality before beta one even comes out, um, well, if uh, Anirud was, uh, all you'll need to do is switch to the edge channel. So you do a mesh CTL system channel. But point is, it's time to do the, the big release. It's gonna have a number of new architectural components. So there's a lot to talk about. There's a bunch of blog posts to write. Um, so now's your chance to be internet famous, I guess. Other thing was we kicked up the, we respawned the Meshery CI meeting. So it met yesterday. Um, pleasantly, there were uh, about 10 people on, uh, which is great. Some people like Shubank um, signing up, sort of suggesting um, some things and then signing up for them as well. Shubank, do you want to, do you want to talk about this for a moment? Uh, yep, I'll just quickly cover this up. So uh, currently all the repositories in uh, the layer five, they do have their uh, independent tests running. But in, in order to ensure the code quality, we need a method or a way to uh, check for the amount of code that has been tested and want to highlight more towards the code component that haven't been or uh, are, or I mean, haven't been tested so far. So for this, this code cov is a very good tool. What it does is it, it runs on to the tests and it generates a report and it uploads it on a very interactive uh, dashboard. And in that dashboard, we can very well see both the tested part as well as the remaining parts of it. So if it's like if there is this file known as let's say index.js in the SRC folder, and let's say it has 10 functions. So if eight of them have been tested, it will also show that which of the two have not been tested. And other from that, one of the very key important tools is that we, to, in order to ensure code quality of the next pull requests after this, is that we could set a threshold value that every code should not at least decrease the test levels or 
if we want to, we can have it an increase of let's say 0.5% or anything like that. So that every time the next PR lands up, it maintains the code quality. So this was it for the suggestion of uh, having code coverage included in all the repositories. And I, I, one of the key integrations was that uh, I think Cypress uh, was by Ronald, uh, I'm sorry, is it Rolando, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, R Rodolfo, yeah. Rodolfo, yep, so sorry. So Rodolfo uh, had uh, Cypress installed in this. So these Cypress reports could also be then converged into code coverage and then uh, even the front end code quality could also be inspected with this. So a number of tools that can be combined together to create that beautiful dashboard that we can have. Nice. If that strikes a chord with anyone, please please see Shubank or and or jump into the Meshri CI meeting. It's it'll meet um, once every two weeks on the currently scheduled on Thursdays. Uh, we've had a long-standing Google Doc that talks about the release strategy. Talks about all. all all of the things concerned with CI, and much of that doc was just published um, here a few hours ago, and it it takes you through a lot of the concerns here. Um, so when CodeCov comes forth, um, that'll be something to kind of document and talk about here as well. The fact that there are different release channels is also discussed here. So nice, a lot of topics in there. <laughs> We do. So there's a lot of topics in here. I will forego asking for feedback. If you do have feedback or you're interested or what have you, there's a Slack channel, Meshery-CI, and we'll save the rest of the time for uh, Mr. Patel. Do you want to you talk to us about this effort? Uh, yeah, so uh, as you like most of would be knowing that we are migrating our uh, layer five website uh, to a new uh, from uh, jekyll based website to new gatsby based website uh, gatsby is a react based framework uh, so like we have already worked on uh, much of the pages and they like we are uh, nearly towards the uh, release uh, phase and so we uh, i'll just uh, give you a walk through of all the uh, all the pages uh, that we have worked upon uh, so yeah the, if you can just uh, drop the link in the chat as well so if anyone wants to visit the website yeah thank you so uh, this is the website that we are working upon uh, working on and uh, it uh, like if you could if you have seen the older version of the website then we have just migrated the entire website and also added a few uh, more sections so like uh, we are just uh, doing the final touch up and refining things so uh, I just uh, I just wanted to uh, like ask a general question if anyone wants to uh, work upon the uh, yeah so this is the landscape page that is the uh, main like uh, one of the main things of uh, layer 5 website uh, uh, so I'll just ask uh, all of the uh, people present to just have a look uh, at the website uh, and give possible feedback for anything that you find that this should be changed or this could be changed and like this color is not right or this text is wrong or some anything that you feel that uh, can be towards the betterment of the website then please do uh, give the feedback uh, on the slack channel if you wish to give the feedback on slack uh, on the website's channel or you can also uh, personally dm me tanuj or nikhil but i will prefer if you could uh, just drop that on the website channel so any one of us can just pick it up and uh, solve the issues and uh, also there are a few things that we are currently working and are open for uh, interaction like if anyone wants to pick up a smaller issue uh, for this Gatsby website uh, so there are one or two pages that we need re uh, refining the designs uh, so I'll just I'll just uh, speak out those and I'll also uh, I'll just drop out the uh, issue links in the uh, website's channel. So if uh, after this meeting, so if you wish to uh, take those on, then you can just uh, 
uh, message it on the uh, GitHub itself and we'll assign it to you. Uh, so the uh, home page and the community page are the two pages that we are uh, looking at more uh, like the community page design is having a bit of uh, revamp and we are having a new design uh, uh, just a few sections are to be improved so we'll just provide you with the uh, perfect links and the design links uh, the figma files where you can find the design as well so uh, you can just uh, check the design and make the changes if it suits your work and uh, yes, yeah, so the most important thing is, by the way, uh, just uh, a testing, well, let's say the testing of the website. So you all might be aware of testing uh, more than me. So I'll just uh, take it as soon as uh, uh, simple as it that uh, we are going to have the testing of the website. So you could just uh, use it on your mobile, laptop, iPad, tablets and on different screens. And uh, you visit all the pages, all the links, all the buttons, like uh, any any way you can uh, provide us feedback, it would be very much helpful for us to uh, incorporate it before uh, before we release it. And uh, yeah, that's all. So that was all the talking part. And so I'll just uh, leave you could go to the layer five repo on GitHub once. Yeah, so in uh, layer five, uh, yeah, so this is the repo where the website's code is all present. So this is the master branch currently where the current website, Jekyll based website's code you can find. And there is a different branch uh, which we are working upon uh, for the new website. That's the layer five NG and this stands for next generation. So this is the Gatsby based website's code. Uh, and all the uh, instructions are also very well provided over there. And if you also feel any uh, issues on working on them, you can also, I just uh, mentioned, you can ask them on the website channel and uh, we'll be uh, on your uh, on your issue solving part. And uh, yeah, so if you if you look at the, uh, yeah, so this is the layer 5 NG site design spec. And uh, the, here are a few uh, things that, uh, a few uh, links to the websites and, uh, uh, the design inspirations and at the uh, last if you go uh, we'll also yeah so this is the brand guide where we are uh, having the colors the logos all the assets mentioned uh, yeah and if you go towards the end of the uh, layer find the spec doc so there are the uh, list of the uh, things that we are currently working on before we go live and uh, I'll just uh, keep on adding over those. And uh, if you feel that any of those, you can pick it up, you can uh, ping me up or I'll just uh, drop those link on Slack anyways. So any of those can work. And yeah, so like if you are uh, familiar in React or also you want to learn React, it will be very easy uh, going thing for you. And you can also, by the way, contribute to the layer five website in that case. Uh, so yeah that's so yeah we'll just mention it like here uh, as uh, lee's mentioning we'll just mention names and you can just take on those things uh and i just uh yeah so if you yeah so you also also seen the figma file where all the designs are present uh, so if you could open the over uh, sitemap once please yeah so this is the overall sitemap for the uh, new website uh, where we have uh, the uh, the first layer is the direct links or the direct pages and uh, like uh, you like you if you visit any website you see a website slash something so the first layer will be those uh, first uh, first identifiers after the website's name and then we'll uh, build upon those uh, on the uh, as we move below so let's say it's the uh, carrier so it will be layer five slash carriers and then we'll have slash new programs or slash jobs and so the green ticks are the uh, pages that implementation are complete uh, the white cross marks are those which will be uh, dealing after the website goes live so like they are not very super important but uh, the things that are left to be marked are uh, currently in progress and uh, we are uh, we are working on them but uh, it will be very helpful if any one of you wants to join us uh, 
so you can also you can just ping me or you can ask over here itself if you have any doubts regarding these things so that will be all from the speaking part <laughs> Wow, Josh, you ended right on right on schedule. If uh, there's a, there's a, there's any interest there, um, the website's channel is a great place to go. Jump in. There's a couple of you um, uh, that I'll I will warn, I guess, that um, there's a, a couple of you that are on the precipice of being invited to have a, a member profile here. Um, and so, so be aware, um, there's, um, we've, there's been just to, to take the last 30 seconds or what have you is, uh, by, <clears throat> by way of example of some of the enhancements that, um, have gone from the current site to, to this, to what will soon be the new site is, uh, like here on the, the community members page, um, you know, we really appreciate, I was just talking, we really appreciate when people come and, and participate and we try to elevate people in their works and the community members and treat, you know, the community as a platform to elevate others. Uh, funny enough, um, I was just talking to Adip this week. And he's been inactive in the community for some time, but we still, um, we still really try to represent um, just because people are inactive doesn't mean that we that the work that was done isn't appreciated, the engagement isn't appreciated. So we still try to, and and plus people come and go, they'll, they'll come back um, as well. Anyway, um, you can see some of the differences. Um, some care has been taken to, well, highlight different areas, different projects that individual community members are involved in. And so Vinayak, Vinayak actually in specific, he designed um, this page and th this actual page here and then worked on the, the badges. And so if you, I guess, if you have a profile that hasn't been updated, then we'll, we'll embarrass Shivai, he's, he's used to it. Um, now is the time to fill, make sure that your profile is up to speed. And then there's a couple of you um, that essentially it goes like this. If you, if you join the community, there's some resources given to you. If you end up doing a, a couple of contributions, you likely get invited to join the GitHub org. If you continue to stick around, you get invited to have a member profile. If you stick around after that, there's, there's a lot of other kind of steps, um, things, things to be involved in and do. But, um, but I really appreciate the work that um, all of you have given to to uplift others, um, particularly some of the, the mesh mates, which is pretty neat. Okay. Drew, I'll catch up with you about SMI conformance after the call. Any, anyone have any final items? Uh, I'll just uh, take a minute. So is, is anyone interested to work on any uh, enhancement on the front end part of their website? Uh, so it will be easier so I can just tag you over there. Yeah, Josh, I'm actually started to work. So I've pinged some issues. I've already picked up some. Yeah, yeah. If I face any issue, I'll definitely ping you up. Yeah, so you're like working on the partners page, right? Yeah, I'm working on the partners page and uh, I also like had a few like a suggestion for some refactoring from the code way side. So I suggested, I think Tanuj has already commented on this. So as soon as I complete the partners page, then I'll try to refactor some of the code that I've found out over there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Basically Thank that you. header and uh, footer one issue, it was repetitive in a lot of pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just saw, that, saw those messages, yeah. <laughs> Nice. Uh, anyone else um, hit up uh, hit up Josh hit up Tanuj Nikhil well thank you all it's been nice to catch up um, have a great weekend talk to you soon
Thank you. Bye bye. Have a nice weekend. Have a nice bye weekend. Bye bye. bye.